Bullshit. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm Dave Mastovich, CEO of Mass Solutions, the world's only no bullshit marketing firm. Today, we have our 300th episode, and I have Maria Marhefka here with us. Yes, I am here. And as Dave said, today marks the 300th episode of the No BS Marketing Show, which is a feat in and of itself. Um, and you know, this is a memorable day in the show's history. So to celebrate, I'm going to flip the script a bit and ask Dave some questions about his podcasting journey. Which excites me because I love to be interviewed. Yes. I'm always doing the interviewing. I love it. It's going to be great. <laughs> so this Q&A session is going to be valuable for people who currently have a podcast or thinking about starting a podcast or simply love listening to podcasts. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So let's the do it. first question that I'm going to start us off on is, how do you think that podcasting has positively impacted your business, whether it was, you know, networking with people, exercising your creativity? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you think it's helped you? First, it forced me to put my thoughts together about marketing trends and ideas and leadership and uh, managerial strategies. That enabled me to, to better articulate those thoughts with the leadership of our team in blogs, uh, in podcasts, in everything. So it helped our listeners, but it also helped our team and our clients. The podcast really challenged me to be creative, and it also tapped into a skill from way back earlier in my career, broadcasting on radio and TV that I hadn't leveraged in a while. So it's like any muscle that I had developed this muscle decades ago, but hadn't touched in a while. So at the beginning, I kind of chuckle when I listened to the first episode or the second episode, our, our sky's falling down, uh, our first episode or our second episode to hear how I needed reps to get back into honing my skills and get back to where I was early in my career when I was on radio and, uh, and in other media. So the podcast helped me there, but it also enabled me to meet amazing guests and many of them have become part of my network and some have actually become clients. That wasn't really the goal. It wasn't to go out and turn someone into a client. It was to try to find interesting guests that I thought had like leadership and communication stories to tell. And in the process of finding those guests, some of them really clicked with me and then the team because they do get to meet people like you or Mike Gaddy or Benita or whoever else. And it has turned into clients. So from our standpoint, it's helped me with building a muscle back that I used to have. It's forced me to think about the philosophies that I have and put them on paper to kind of be prepared so that you're not just winging it totally when you're on the show. And then it's also helped me to meet some great guests that became part of my network, but also mm -hmm. many have become clients. Right. And do you think, you know, from your background in radio and broadcasting, do you think that's maybe why you gravitated towards podcasting? Because it's kind of, it's kind of in the same yeah, it's radio on demand, yeah. audio on demand, absolutely. When podcasting hit its first wave, probably close to 10 years ago, I had thought about doing a podcast. And actually, we researched, and I have a close friend who was a mentor earlier in my career, David Smith, and he is a broadcasting guru, and he ran radio stations and hired me when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to him, but the problem with that is David is so great at what he does is he like broke it down for us and almost intimidated us because he's like, you need this piece of equipment, that piece of equipment. And it, it did scare me. Mm -hmm. So I just said, nah, we're not going to do it. And so then podcasting did level off. It came out like 10, 12 years ago. You saw this excitement for it and you had a couple of big ones. But then about five years ago, I saw that it was actually starting to take off more and I thought now is the time. So then... I actually joined something called Podcaster's Paradise, which a guy by the name of John Lee Dumas, who makes his entire living from producing a daily podcast. He was the first person to do a daily business podcast. And as he did that and had no listeners and built it into a pretty good listenership, he realized that he had a model. So he offered this Podcaster's Paradise for a one-time fee. 
to teach people how to go ahead and do the podcast. So I subscribed to that probably four or five years ago and I just did whatever they said as far as equipment and trying to make sure how you structured it, combine that with what I already knew from my radio days, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't stuck in the radio mindset. And that's what was kind of funny because when I first did the show, I made them a half hour and you know, in the old days radio at the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour, you had to have your ID. And I also had, some sponsors early and I would actually break like I was on the radio show and you have to loosen that up some. So I wanted to combine that radio experience and that radio knowledge with someone that was kind of a guru in it and John Lee Dumas and all that helped me to really leverage my skills because for me, the speaking is like what sports writing is for my brother. We both from an early age, 13, 14 years old, were already doing radio and writing for sports and it does come much more naturally to me i'm more cognizant of how dead air can be okay and pausing can be okay it actually helps the listener to think and collect their thoughts and i've just always been comfortable on the mic and then i was a dj as well for you know have my own djing business (laughs) so yes it does play off of some of my skills nice so in all of the years that you've been doing this podcast, have you seen some trends emerge that, you know, kind of piqued your interest and you've kind of been riding those waves? Yes. So one of the things that I noticed about five years ago was how many people were starting to listen to podcasts. And it started out maybe 10 to 15% of the population, but now it's up to about 25%, probably one in four people listen weekly because the ability to listen when you want to. So you say audio on demand and you can listen passively. So one of the first things that happened was Apple CarPlay and the Android derivative of that began to be installed in cars about three years ago. So that made it that much easier for people to just play their podcast in their car. So that was a big thing that I thought changed the game. And the fact that it's passive listening enables you to be able to listen while you're working out, to listen while you're cooking, to listen while you're walking, anything that you were doing. So passive listening enables it to work. So I did know that those trends were coming and I felt that we had to dig in statistically and we found some things like the average person likes it to be about 23 minutes. And when you think about the average commute in America is probably between 25 and 30 minutes. When you work out, it's anywhere from 25 minutes to an hour most of the time. Mm -hmm. So these episodes being this length really helped. So we started looking at things like that But the most compelling thing is that over 80% of us podcast listeners listen to the entire episode. That's really powerful. I know I catch myself. I'll listen to podcasts sometimes just for fun or enjoyment. So that'll be sports or pop culture or or music related. Then other times I will listen for growth, personal growth. And other times I'll listen specifically for business. But in all three instances, I personally will go back when I drove in, if it wasn't done, when I drive home, I finish it. Yep, that's if what I, I was do working. too. So, so <laughs> eight, over 80% listen to the whole thing. And think about how powerful that is. Yes. How many people listen to the whole actual terrestrial radio show? Mm-hmm. Not very much. And you don't listen again. Right. You can go back to it. So it's just a great medium for what we're looking for at Mass Solutions is we want people to work here who are thought provokers and want to be proactive. We want to work with clients that are open to ideas Mm -hmm. and don't think they have all the answers. Those are the type of people that are going to listen to podcasts. Right. So it's a good fit. Wonderful. So that all makes sense. And then, you know, in your opinion, obviously we've kind of covered it a little bit as we've, you know, been going through these questions, but what are some of the benefits, you know, that you think personally Mm -hmm. and from a business standpoint, people can kind of reap from having a podcast? From a business standpoint, what I tell clients of ours is the fact that you have to take the time to encapsulate your thoughts into some kind of format and have some consistency of the way you're going to do that show. If you do that and you're a business leader, so I'm talking about someone who is a CEO of a a company that they're really good in their field. They can start talking about that field. If they're a healthcare company, they can talk about the healthy aspect of what they do in healthcare, whether that's PT or home health or, or diet, nutrition. 
if it's someone on the business side, they can talk about the services they provide. So the first thing is it forces you to get your message down and it forces you to think in a way about your audience. The second thing is it gives you a chance and a platform to create content that doesn't appear completely self-serving. When you look at the No BS Marketing Show, our loyal listeners really do talk about, I'll get texts and emails from people who will say, this episode helped me this way. Mm -hmm. I had a guest, we both talked about this. We had a guest right. who was on, uh, who had a client, a former client come back to them after hearing the podcast. So you can tell that it's not self-serving. So when you create content that's not about you, it's, it's to help others. That content, when it's a podcast, then is, is lifelong. You can put it on your website. You can send a link to people. So I think that's the second thing. The first is it gets you to think of your thoughts. The second is it gets you content that you can use repetitively and tell your story. Right. And like to your point, whenever content's not about you, it makes it interesting to the consumer. And that's what you're saying is that's why people are listening to podcasts and are listening to the No BS Marketing Show because it's not self-serving content. Correct. It's consumer-focused content. Correct. What we try to do, and you and I, and, and you've been a great addition to the team in the last six months, is what we try to do is you and I talk all the time about Bed Bath & Beyond. We both read the article and said, hey, you know what, that kind of ties to something. And we just mm -hmm. then turn that into a quick podcast, blog post, LinkedIn post. That's not self-serving. That's something that's relatable. Right. Uh, the Burger King stuff we, we've written about. And so you know, we get feedback from people who say that helped me to understand marketing for my field, even though my field is B2B, it helped when I heard something about Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And so when it's not self-serving and it's helpful, it does make someone want to listen. So that's the challenge because you have to create that kind of content. And so many people don't, and that's why their podcast or their blog or their messaging fails. Right. So that leads perfectly into the next question, which is, how do you come up with your episode ideas? You know, obviously, whenever it's, you know, you're writing a blog, you know, mm -hmm. you might get writer's block, sure. and then there might be, I don't know if this is a term, but, you know, podcaster's block, where, like, right. you know, you got to keep ideas coming right. in to keep, a, to keep a pulse on your podcast. Well, the biggest thing that I've learned is that podcasting, just like Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, LinkedIn, they're all like any other communication channel, and they require the same success factors as any type of marketing. And this is really important to the listeners because what we all do is we get hung up on our time, our era. And so that's why someone becomes old because they're stuck in the way, you know, print, we did this in 1992. And then uh, millennials 20 years from now are going to be doing the same thing. And that's what's great is because when someone's young, they have the arrogance of ignorance and they think that old people are stupid. And that's the arrogance of ignorance. But what you have to do is relate and realize that every one of these channels still follow the tenets of successful communication. Mm -hmm whether it's something brand new or whether it's something that's five years old, 10 years old, or 20 years old, they all started the same way. And the first is to understand your audience. And our target markets for the show include entrepreneurs and owners of businesses, but also C-level executives, people that are CEOs, chief marketing officers, chief financial officers, and other senior leaders. So that's one target. But another audience are marketing professionals who want to grow and get better at what they do. And that could be a director level marketing person, it could be a marketing manager, it could be an individual contributor. Another market are people that are storytellers, which could be that last market, but there's also people that are storytellers in politics, there's people that are storytellers in other walks of life. But then another target market, probably the fourth one that we're really excited about is young professionals or even college students and that excites me because then you're getting the chance to mentor another generation. So the first step in any podcast or any type of content that you produce or anything that you do messaging wise is to understand your audience and defining that and drilling down into it. And then the second part is finding out what makes those people tick. Mm -hmm. So we have a show that's about leadership and communication, and we know that that's not going to be for everybody. So that's why we said those four target markets can see value in leadership and communication, but not everyone fits that. So there's a marketing professional who nothing's wrong with this. They're happy with what they're doing. They want to continue to do that. They want to do it reasonably well. And then they're on their way to home or vacation or whatever. 
that person's probably not going to like the show as much. That's okay. So we know that the person that is going to like that show is someone that wants growth. Mm -hmm. So when you bring on an Arnie Berkiani who's been there and built a company from a house in Mars, PA to where it was sold to the Washington Post, and he's telling you how he did that at a young age, starting at about age 25. If you're 25 and you hear that story about leadership and communication and you're driven mm -hmm. and you are into personal growth, then we're making it about you. Right. So that's why finding out what makes them tick is really important. And what do they want? How do they listen? So we learned that, like I said, the sweet spot of the podcast is under 30 minutes. That's finding out how they listen and what they want. So all these things tie back to that original point that I said, regardless of what medium you're using, whether it is a podcast, a blog, a video, whether it's traditional advertising, whether it's pay-per-click, whatever you're doing, you have to still understand that target audience and drill down into who they are by defining them and then find out what makes them tick and build the messaging that way. So that's what we've done here. And that's what I would say to anyone that's thinking of doing a podcast. Because right. far too many people do the podcast. I like beer. <laughs> we'll do a beer podcast. Okay, but who's your target and right. what do they want? Mm -hmm. So, So it really is, you know, an extension of you know, your content marketing strategy. And I think the way that we've been approaching it um, lately is like you said, you know, with the Bed Bath & Beyond example and Best Buy is we kind of pull in those trending mm -hmm. topics and we can turn, you know, a podcast into a piece of pillar content. So that's, you know, our pillar content. Yes. And then from there, we can kind of break it down into maybe a LinkedIn article, another mm -hmm. blog post, little social media snippet. So it's really important to kind of like, to your point, you know, figuring out who's your audience, what makes them tick, and then kind of tweaking that content to fit the context of each medium that you're going to be publishing it. Right. And if you go back to my earlier point about Podcasters Paradise and John Dumas, what he said in the first call and the first uh, webinar call or whatever was right off the bat, choose whether you want to have an interview focused show or a guest focused show. And so I felt I love interviewing and I love hearing other people's stories and I love then helping them take that to another level. So I went with the interview approach from mm -hmm. the beginning and we had uh, over, I think we had 50, 52 guests in year one and like 40 in year two. But again, we had to find out what our clients wanted. And what I learned was there'd be a couple of times we didn't have a guest in year two and I would just do a solo podcast. Mm -hmm. Or if something happened, like I was a David Bowie fan, Prince fan, when both of them passed away, I did an episode about that. And then I would just go on and rant about something and do these other episodes. And when I did those, we saw this completely different response mm -hmm. from completely different people. So we realized by year three, well, I love interviewing people and I love the guest approach, but year one, they were almost 95 out of 100 shows were guess right. year two is probably 80 out of 100 so year three we ended up making it like more like 50 50 and now in year four we've decided we're going to dedicate one roughly one guest per month mm -hmm. because we love getting the guest on there we love what they bring but our listeners really like the solo rants so you have to adjust based on what you find out mm -hmm. and what we also did was when we interviewed those guests we were finding that the interviews were taking 45 minutes to an hour so what we did from the beginning was said wait a minute our audience wants a 22 minute to 30 minute show. So we would split the guest into two episodes. Right. When we do the solo rant, we try to keep it under a half hour. In fact, sometimes the solo ones are seven minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Today's right. will be a little longer because it's you and I talking about the 300th, but we'll still probably keep it around 30 minutes. That's adjusting to what your market told you. Our audience told us that they liked the solo ones a little bit better. Right. And now what we're finding is since there's less guests, every guest is appreciated more by the loyal listeners. That's a good strategy. And then the fifth and final question, you know, if you could give some tips to listeners who are just starting a podcast and, you know, they're kind of in that, you know, initial stage where they're not really getting a lot of listeners, they're not getting a lot mm -hmm. of traction, what would you tell them to stick with it and to not give up so easily? Well, there's a number of thoughts there. And one thing that I do want to mention is focusing on one big idea. I think that people end up not doing those first two things, uh, defining that target market they want to reach, understanding what that target market wants, and then then building one big idea around it. So I want to stress why leadership and communication is what this show's about, because I would ask a guest in year one to be on the show, and they would say, 
I don't really do marketing. And I would, I would say like, okay, I'm not going to be able to explain to this CEO that he does marketing or she does marketing and BD and sells every day and every minute of their day. But I would then say to them, well, the show's about leadership and communication. They go, what? And I'd say, well, what I found when I was in chief marketing officer positions and doing turnarounds of big and large companies and even medium-sized ones is that the leadership and communication aspect was what helped turn the companies around. And the second part of that is marketing, PR, sales, communications teams at companies aren't good at leadership and communication. That's, let me repeat that, they aren't good at leadership and communication. <laughs> so we have, one of our services is built around activities and accountabilities agreement. We call it AAA. That was my forte as a leader. I would come into these places and quickly assess what the PR team was doing, what the marketing team was doing, what sales was doing. And I was able to find that there was an absence of activities and accountabilities agreement. So there was a lot of ambiguity and I believe ambiguity breeds mediocrity. So my trademark was to go in and help bring leadership and communication to the whole organization, but specifically to the PR, the sales, the internal communication, the marketing, the crisis communications, the corporate communications, those teams weren't often led. Mm -hmm. So our show focused on one big idea about leadership and communication. What that does is now it opens up to every listener because anyone out there can benefit from better leadership and communication. And it opens up every guest can talk about it. Whenever a CEO says to me, I don't really do marketing, I say, do you lead? Of course I lead. Do you communicate? Of course I communicate. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to ask you these five questions. You want to do the show. Right. So that's the first thing is uh, have a focus on one big idea. Ultimately, we want to make sure we, we tell people this. There are eight reasons why people become BS marketers. And we're going to help you identify and then avoid all eight. And that's what the show does. So leadership and communication tied to those eight reasons you become a BS marketer. But the second thing is persistence because what ends up happening is it's incredible statistically how few podcasts actually survive. When you look at the statistics, it's just absurd. I think right, I think it was uh, 12 percent of podcasts have only published a single episode. <laughs> and that's what I always call the uh, the quick start and uh, quick fade is people get excited about something in marketing and and they'll end up wanting to try it. And so it's just like when people when companies would try social media and different outlets, I would mm -hmm. say this is what happened. People would get excited to do Twitter, then they'd fade. They get excited to do LinkedIn, then like they'd the fade. shiny ball. Yeah. So the same thing happens where, like you said, twelve percent have only published a single episode. Six percent haven't even made it past two episodes. Half of all podcasts have fourteen or fewer episodes. So think about that. Half of all the podcasts out there, and I think it's up over 700,000 podcasts now, have 14 or fewer episodes. So when you hit 50, you're in the upper 20% probably. And when you hit 100, you're probably in the upper 10%. And when you hit 300, you're probably in the upper 3%. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't have that statistic exactly, but the patience that you need for this is huge. So if you think you want to do a podcast because you want to get a lot of exposure and a lot of listeners, that's probably going to be a frustrating thing for you. And you're going to put a lot of time and money into it. Podcasting is not like traditional media. The lamest radio station in, a, in the 23rd largest market, Pittsburgh, still probably has 10,000 listeners at any given time. Right. You're not going to get 10,000 listeners on your podcast. 99.9% .9 don't get 10,000. Mm -hmm. What it is is that one half of 1% or 1% or 2%, whatever it is, I don't have exact stats. I'm just telling you. The shows like Serial and other ones like that or in sports you'd have like uh, Dan Lebitard or, or Bill Simmons. They're, they're personalities. They're they're getting millions of listeners, but the majority of podcasts, if you're getting 150 downloads per episode, you're in the upper 10, 15%. Right. And I think whenever you're saying that, you know, what kind of popped up in my head is, you know, even with social media and with podcasting, it doesn't really matter about 
the number. So the quantity of the followers, the quantity of the listeners, right. really what it boils down to at the end of the day, it's all about the quality. So like right. if you could have 10 quality listeners, absolutely, especially for, you know, your podcast that can come, you know, turn into leads or, mm -hmm. you know, just avid fans, you know, that's, I think at the end of the day, an extremely beneficial reason to stick it out. Great point, Maria, because if you're thinking of doing a podcast and you're listening today, what she just said is the key. You shouldn't get into this to get a ton of quantity of listeners. You want to go and target and drill down and get quality. Yesterday, I go into lunch at the South Side, somewhere in the South Side of Pittsburgh, and this guy comes in who's a CEO, and I haven't talked to him in 10 to 15 years because I'm lousy at that. I'm lousy at networking and following up and stuff like that. I just get so passionate about the, the work and so forth that I don't do that well enough, even though I can help our customers do it. I can help our clients do it. I say, how are you doing? He goes, Dave, I feel like I see you every single day. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, you have so much shit on LinkedIn. He goes, <laughs> that's some good shit. And what's on LinkedIn? The podcasts are on LinkedIn, the blog posts are on LinkedIn, other thoughts that you and I think of in the morning, we go and say, let's pop this on LinkedIn. That's matters because it doesn't matter if there were 20,000 people or 2,000 or 200, that's who I need to reach. The normal person walking down the street can't buy mass solutions. That's the same for most companies out there. Most companies aren't Doritos where everyone can buy Doritos. Most companies have this small segment that can buy them. So don't do podcasting thinking that you're going to become a celebrity or you're even going to get anybody to listen. I, I, I joke that the first few episodes, my mom didn't even listen. <laughs> like, so you're, listen. you're like episode five and I'm saying, <laughs> dad, would you listen and maybe even do it three times just so my numbers are better. <laughs> but then you start getting some loyal people and you get like one time we used to be every Tuesday and Thursday. And one time we only did one show on a Wednesday and I got like a bunch of texts from people on Thursday. Like, why didn't you have a show today? And I was mm -hmm. like, well, I just did a solo one. This Thanks week. for listening but first. Thank you but... <laughs> for listening. You're the greatest. Uh, so uh, that's the key point is you're not going to get even, you're not even going to get 10,000 for one episode. You might right. get 10,000 spread over 50 episodes, but, and I think that's what the important thing is. And even when people come on my show, they'll get, and you and I laugh because they'll get all hung up about one little thing. They say, can you edit that out? And I want to say, like, you're not going to get in trouble for something you said on a podcast that wasn't the F word and it wasn't a lie. You didn't criticize someone. You just said the name of someone wrong. It's like understood, number one. And number two, it's not like this is going to a million people. Right. So, and you saw that just this week. Mm -hmm. We we're just kind of both laughing because we did it. We made the edit and everything. We're fine. We understand. Everybody, we all, no one wants to be make a mistake. Right. But the reality of it is podcasting also is about being normal. Like when the, the sound piece of thing fell off the wall back there, we didn't stop and <laughs> rewind. We just laughed and hoped it didn't hit Hannah back there. Right. <laughs> no one's laying on the doing floor. Doing magic the on, the, on the video. So yeah, you, you just have to make sure that, you know, like you stumble. And for someone from my generation, that's a little bit harder. It's mm -hmm. a little bit harder because we're used to, you didn't put anything on the air unless it was perfect. And if you had dead air, when I, when I interview someone 45 years old and there's dead air, they're like, oh, and I go, no, no, it's not, not 1994 where like dead air was bad. It's okay. Dead air is okay because it's giving people time while they're thinking it through. And sometimes if people kind of glaze over in a podcast, they hear dead air, they're like, look, they're like, oh, yeah. did it stop? Yeah. Does it keep going? You exactly. know, so it keeps them in tune. Yes. Well, Dave, 300 episodes are under your belt. They're out there for the world to listen to. So let's, you know, keep trucking and get at least 300 more. We're going to get to 3,000. Oh, I like I'll it a lot. I'll be 90. I'll be like, <laughs> well, I remember back in the good old days and we liked it. Crumpy old man from uh, Saturday Night Live, bad, bad imitation, but yes, yes. So, Wonderful. Thank you, Maria, for coming aboard on the team. You're doing a great job. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Are you going to do the close or am I going to do the close? Ooh. You do the close. Oh you, my gosh, good thing I have it in front of me. Oh. Well, this marks the end of another episode of the No BS Marketing Show recorded from our studios in bold, beautiful downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Remember to ask yourself, what's the big idea and build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions, no BS.